my memory verse. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. He was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Genesis 28, verse 16 and 17. Happy Sabbath, church. It's good to be here this morning, my very first time at the Auburn Seventh-day Adventist Church. And of course, we would have wished it would have been in different uh, conditions, right? To be able to see your faces and to be able to uh, worship together. But we praise God that in spite of having to close uh, in-person uh, worship services, because we're not closing our church. We have not closed the church, but we're closing the, the uh, in-person services. But um, hopefully, even though I cannot see your face this morning, that uh, you will be blessed as myself. I've been blessed in preparation for this message today. I'm just going to take this little sheet here. I'll probably put it, I'll take it to Pastor Mel because we have a rivalry here going on. <laughs> Actually, um, I did uh, go to Chula Vista High School there in uh, Chula Vista, and, uh, but I didn't graduate from Chula Vista. I actually graduated from San Diego Academy. My last year, I went to, um, I went to San Diego Academy, but um, I don't know what, uh, well, well, we'll have more conversations there, but I do remember Montgomery. Actually, that was one of the schools I was going to go to, <laughs> but, um, but yes, I ended up uh, graduating from... Uh, uh, San Diego Academy, and then, you know, one of the, one of the nice things, and, and Pastor Mel can, can attest to this, is that, you know, um, I love Northern California, but they say, people from San Diego say, that when we get to heaven, we will come to San Diego for the weekends, <laughs> because of the, be the beautiful weather, but um, this morning, uh, I want to thank uh, Pastor Mel Baga for giving me the opportunity to come and speak here to do, today with you. And to share God's message in a very, very special way. Well, first of all, uh, receive greetings from our conference president, Mark Woodson, and our treasurer, John Rasmussen, as together we're praying as we see how God is leading his church in spite of all the things that unexpected things that have come about this year and for many of us. And uh, although we do not know when the Lord is going to come, the exact date, like the Apostle Paul said, we believe that his coming is nearer than when we first believed. And that is, that is, that is just a fact. And so um, this morning, I want to share a, a message that I hope that it will be a blessing to you. And I want to begin by, with a story. Actually, it happened in a little town called, uh, is, it's actually, it used to be a mining town called Globe, Arizona. For those who have been through there, it's a little small community, probably like an hour or so, uh, 60 miles from Phoenix or Mesa, Arizona. And uh, one time, um, we have a church there in Globe, but um, not many people were attending. And one of the things that uh, I was Hispanic coordinator at that time, and uh, we were trying to start a Spanish congregation and so we had like, kind of like a combined thing in the afternoon. And we went visiting uh, the different neighbors there around the community of the church. And some people from the community came to the church. And that was very surprising. But I will never forget this. Um, I was speaking. And as the people were singing, I was getting ready to I was speaking. And I was, something was being said that there was a little young kid sitting in the front row and I believe that his family were probably not members of the church, but were part of, the, part of the community. But you could have just seen his face. He was just taken by the moment. And uh, one of the words that came out of his mouth is the introduction for today's sermon. And this is what the young kid said. He looked to his mom and dad and he said, Are we in heaven? And I was, I, I was trying to figure out why was he saying, are we in heaven? Because apparently, 
for this young kid, this for him became a reality. Is as if for real he was in heaven in that little church in Globe, Arizona. And I thought for a moment, isn't that God's desire for us? That while we are here on earth, waiting for the soon return of Jesus, it is His desire that we also live in the realities of the eternal blessings of heaven. But um, I know as we approach Thanksgiving and these holidays, which is a time where we celebrate, it's a time where we come together with family, it's a time where there's joy and laughter and there's a lot of eating as well. Um, in this time, how are most Americans will be celebrating Thanksgiving this year? The pandemic, the shutdowns, the fear of loved ones being infected with COVID-19, those who have lost loved ones because of COVID this year, or for other causes like myself, this year, my father passed away um, in, in July of 2000, this year. And schools closing, people losing their jobs, canceling in-person worship service, this has brought in a new reality. The reality of fear, the reality of uncertainty, and the reality of anxiety. And it is my prayer, church, today. It is my prayer. I don't know where you are in your journey, but it is my prayer that God will speak to you today. And as He speaks to you today, that you will, in a sense, enter into the realities of the kingdom of heaven. So let's pray as we go into the word of God this morning. Let's have a word of prayer. Our gracious, precious Jesus, we are indeed living in troubling times where a sense of hopelessness has taken the reality of many people even within the community of believers. But God, today, as we go into the Scriptures, and as we go into Your Word, although we cannot see You with our eyes, but help us to enter the realities of heaven by faith and by the power of the Word of God. I don't know what are the situations, what are the things that are troubling our people that are watching at this very moment. But all that I pray is that the Holy Spirit would speak to each heart this morning. That's my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's, let's open our Bibles to Genesis chapter 28. And this young girl, this young uh, child who read the scripture, she did it so graciously. Thank you for reading that scripture. And I also want to thank, for, thank uh, the praise team. Those songs were just touching my heart as I was just meditating on, on what I'm going to share with you today. But thank you. Thank you for making heaven real for us. Amen? Making heaven real. So I'm going to read from Genesis. I'm going to read from uh, verse 10 and on. And then we'll elaborate a little bit on the story. Now Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. And don't forget that. So he came to a certain place. Why is it a certain place? Because... It was not a city, not a town. It was a desolate place. That's very important for us to remember. A certain place. And stay there all night. And because the sun had set, he took one of the stones on that place and he put it at his head. And he lay down in the place to sleep. Then he dreamed. He dreamed and behold, a ladder was set upon the earth. And the top reached heaven. And there the angels of God were descending 
were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said. So not only does he see a dream, but he actually hears an out of a voice through this dream. And this is what the out of a voice says to him, which is God. I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land which you lie, I will give you to you and your descendants. Also your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. And in you, this is beautiful, and in you, your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you. And wherever you go, I will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. I did not know it. In other words, I did not know this reality. I did not know it. And then it says, And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of of God. And this is the gate of heaven. May God bless his word this morning. Well, just taking a couple of lessons as we look through here. And, and the first thing as we need to take in context is that Jacob is running for his life. He's running for dear life. His brother has decided to take revenge upon him. He has stolen his blessing his birthright. He has deceived his father. So imagine Jacob taking this journey on him by himself. And in those days, you would never make a long journey on your own. Because that presented a threat to your life. So there is danger looming behind him from his brother. There is danger in front of him for the enemies of the land that could put his life in danger. His heart is heavy with regrets, with guilt, and with hopelessness. Jacob is defeated. As a matter of fact, he's traveling from Beersheba to Haran. And what, what a... Um, dichotomy. What an irony. He is in the land, he is in the promised land, the land that God had promised the children of Israel. But now he has to escape to Haran, to the very place where Abraham had once had come. He is traveling 373 miles approximately with the sense that God has forsaken him. That he has lost the favor and the blessing of God forever. Satan was pressing his mind. Tempting him with these thoughts. That there was no more hope. And by the way. If you ever come to this place. Like Jacob. I do want to remind you. That that is not God. Those are the lies of Satan to keep you captive in the realities of his bondage. But in the midst of this darkness, in the midst of this confusion, I praise God that God did not forsake Jacob. As a matter of fact, God takes the initiative to talk to Jacob, to speak to him through this dream. And this is very powerful because as we look, as we look uh, at the dream, the dream gives them a new reality, 
a new reality of heaven, a new reality of God's presence, a new reality of God's activity in his life. And I know that when we're going through difficult times and troubling times, we usually get trapped in a earthly reality. The one where we cannot see above and beyond of what we are experiencing. But the children of God are called to live by faith. For the just shall live by faith. And so one of the beautiful things that I find here, and I'm reminded, is that as he sees this ladder, as a matter of fact, the Hebrew word there for ladder actually has a couple of meanings. It's a staircase or a ramp. It's a ramp where Jacob is seeing angels that are ascending and descending, and this ladder is touching the very place where he's at, And it's reaching heaven. It's reaching heaven. By the way, you knew that there are, according to the Bible, there are three heavens. There are the heavens, the heaven of our atmosphere. The heavens where all the galaxies and everything that is out in the outer space. And then the third heaven. The third heaven where God resides in his throne. And this is what, what Jacob is seeing And so I want to bring a couple of good news for you today, this morning. And that is, the first thing is that this dream, it's the very first time that Jacob gets a glimpse of the plan of salvation. It is a glimpse of the plan of redemption. It is a glimpse that the one, that the one who is to come one day would become that ladder. It is a glimpse of the plan of salvation. You see, when Adam and Eve believe Satan's lies, they sinned. They sinned. And the venom, the poison, reached their soul and their heart, causing them to fear, to be ashamed, to run in a sense of hopelessness. But God, again, took the initiative. <laughs> He comes down and he visits Adam and Eve. He, ca he calls them just as he's doing with Jacob. You see, my friends, today I want to give you the good news, my dear brothers and sisters. And the good news is that ladder is representing Christ. Christ is that ladder. Christ is the staircase. Christ is that ramp. Christ is that very connection that connects earth with heaven. And I have good news for you today. I don't know what you're living and what you're going through, but Christ is the reality of heaven. Christ came from heaven to earth and he set his foot, he seated his foot here on the ground, here on this earth to connect it to heaven. As a matter of fact, the Apostle Paul said the following. I think you'll see it on your screen. He said this and read it. It's from Ephesians chapter 2 and 4. All the way through six, actually, it is. But because of, because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. When we were dead in transgressions, and notice it says here, it is by grace that you have been saved. And look at what it says here. And God raised us up with Christ. And seated us, seated us with him, where? In heavenly realms, or other translation, in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Isn't that good news? Christ is the connection from earth to heaven. He is the reality of the blessings, of the eternal blessings that are in store for us. That's why Hebrews says that we are to keep our eyes in the author and the finisher of our faith. But I got some other good news this morning. Through Christ, in, in, in the Apostle Paul says that in Christ, all the promises of God are yes. Because the next section of the dream Now Jacob hears an audible voice. It is God speaking to him. And I would like to suggest this morning, I would like to suggest that one of the ways 
that we escape our fears, one of the ways we confront better yet our fears is living on the promises of God, is believing the promises of God. You know, I came across, I came across this past, a couple of weeks ago, I was reading through um, these, um, it was an, it's an old devotional on the lessons of leadership of Nehemiah from Ellen G. White. And she has this one quote that just captivated me, and I decided to use that. As a matter of fact, if you were able to watch the We Still Believe um, broadcast that we had from the conference, if you have not, go through our Facebook and watch it. But in our prayer section, we decided to call it Holy Arguments. Uh, Ellen G. White refers, refers that when we claim God's promises, these are our holy arguments. That we have a right to claim these holy arguments, not because we deserve them, not because we are entitled to them just because of our goodness, but because God has promised to us. And God gives them five promises. We're not going to go through them, but I'm just going to remind you. The first promise he tells Jacob, I will give you this land. Not only to you, Jacob, but I'm giving it to you, all of your descendants. You see, the, ble- the promises of God are not only for you. The promises of God are also for your kids. For the generations to come, the promises of God are for your descendants. And that's good news. Number two, he says, your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. Of course, I don't intend to repeat the same uh, pattern that I had with well, my siblings. In my family, there's a total of actually... 14 siblings. That's a big family. <laughs> I, don't con- I, don't in- I don't intend to go that route. <laughs> the third one is, God promised him that through his seed, through him, God would bless all the families of the earth. We were called, and this is a promise of God. You know what? This is a promise of God that I've been claiming for many, many years. Since my kids were born, I've been praying to God that my kids, that me, my family, my kids, will be a blessing wherever they go. As a matter of fact, my good friend, Joseph, Jose, my good friend, Joseph, there's one theme that covers his life, the favor of God and the blessing of God, which can be the same thing almost. But have you noticed what it says about Joseph? It says that because of Joseph, God blessed Pharaoh and blessed Egypt and I want to claim that promise that God's blessing would be upon me my kids and that blessing would extend to everyone around uh, around us as a family imagine you imagine God blessing your neighborhood because of you imagine God blessing your school because of you imagine God blessing the place where your work because of you and not just because of you but because of God through you and then he goes on to say I will bring you back and then it says I will not leave you until I say and fulfill everything that I have promised you yes Jacob did not deserve these promises of God he was not entitled to them because he was good no He now had holy arguments, but because of God's grace. You know, many years ago, uh, probably back in 2002, 2003, I was a pastor in Brownsville, Texas, down in the valley. And for those who have been in that part of Texas, um, it was Thanksgiving coming up. And we had just, we had finished our Thanksgiving dinner I had got a special ad by a, a, one of the largest electronic stores in town. And um, I saw in the ad that for Black Friday, for Black Friday, they were going to have on sale. At that time, it was the Norton Utilities of antivirus for my computer. Uh, uh, regular price, $99. Special sale for Black Friday, 9 dollars 
So I told my wife, you know what? I am going to get online. I'm going to make, I'm going to go there early in the morning. I need to get that. So uh, sure enough, I got there. I went like at 3 o'clock in the morning. And there was already a huge line. There was a huge line. And I said, oh boy, I, I hope I can, I can make it for my offer. And then, long story, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock. And then suddenly they opened and there was like a stampede. Everybody's going and flushing to the store, to the different section. I was hit it right to, I knew where I needed to go. But when I got to my section, I was looking and looking around and I couldn't find it. And I told one of the uh, attendants there, one of the uh, persons there, and I said, but, uh, wait, I, I took out my hand. I said, excuse me, um, I'm looking for the Norton, uh, Norton Utilities antivirus for my computer. Um, it's right here. He said, oh, we don't have it in stock. I go, what? No, we, we don't have it in stock in this store. It's at the other store in McAllen, in the other store in McAllen Texas, which is about an hour away from there. She said, I'm so sorry, but in your ad, it says here that you have it in this store. I am so sorry, sir. I'll tell you what, I decided never to do that again. <laughs> I decided never to do that again. As a matter of fact, I can say now before I was very careful. I wonder if that store closed because of that. The store was called Circuit City. <laughs> Circuit City. But I have good news to you. Is that God gives us his promises. And anything he promises, God is faithful to fulfill. And as a matter of fact, they are available for all of us. And they never surpass their warranty. They, their lifetime warranty. Finally, finally, the latter, the dream, disappears. Jacob awakes. No voice, no ladder, no angels. It's the reality again. But something happened to Jacob. It almost seems that he forgot of what was happening to him prior to his dream. Because when Jacob wakes up from that dream, even though there's no more dream, there's no more audible voice of God, there's no more angels, Jacob, we could say, passed through the gate of heaven. Jacob said, surely the Lord is in this place, he said, and I knew it not. There is no, none other but the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. And this is the gate of heaven. Yes, the ladder disappeared. But now, Jacob was living in a new reality. I have a couple of quotes, and we'll wrap it up today. And that is, this is one, it's a very powerful one from Patriots and Prophets, where it talks about, how we can live in the realities of heaven. And, and, and this is something that you can do during, during, not only during Thanksgiving, but throughout this year. And this is what she says. She says, <clears throat> The Christian should often review his past life and recall with gratitude the precious deliverances that God has wrought for him, supporting him in trial. And then she continues to say, Opening ways before him when all seemed dark and forbidding, refreshing him with the ready to faint. He should recognize all of them as evidences of the watch care of the heavenly angels. In view of these immeasurable blessings, he should often ask, with subdued and grateful heart, what shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits towards me? One of the things that Jacob did from that moment on, the, the dream disappeared, but he never forgot that. That became, became for him the reality of looking to the past to give him the reassurance that he could go into heaven by the evidence of the past. 
You know, with all the things that are going on today, I think this year particularly is going to be a very significant evidence for you for next year. Because whatever God has done to help you navigate through this year, you can say that God has been faithful to you and to me. And so this is one of the things that Jacob uh, just left in his forefront, and he praised the, he praised the Lord. And that's, why, and that's why the Sabbath day, the Sabbath day, yes, today, Ellen G. White says that on the Sabbath day, for those 24 hours, that the spirit of gratitude should be at its peak. This is the day that we remember all the evidences of God's provision, of God's faithfulness, of God's promises, of God's goodness to us, and we celebrate today. We celebrate that today. You see, the Sabbath help us, helps us in the reality of heaven. One day, one day, very soon, one day, Pastor Mel, one day, we will enter into an eternal rest. No more COVID, no more pandemic, no more depression, no more cancer. We will experience eternal rest for the eternal ages. The Sabbath brings that joy and that anticipation. <clears throat> and finally, you know, this is very, very interesting because when God appeared to him and in that dream, the reason, one of the reasons he says, I didn't know that God was in this place. There are two reasons why he, he made that statement. One is because he thought that God was only with you when you obeyed. He thought that whenever you sin or you disobey God, God would forsake you and abandon you. That's what he thought and many people thought and people still think today. But that is a lie. Because even when we sin against God, even when we disobey, God will never forsake us. And the second thing, why he said that, is because in the Old Testament times, it was believed among pagans and even among the Jewish people, it was believed that gods, the gods, were only gods in their local area. That's why the different nations had different gods, because those gods were particular to that very specific geographical area. You had the gods of Egypt. You had Marduk, the god of uh, Babylon. You had for them our God, Jehovah God, as the God confined to Israel. So when, when Jacob is traveling to this desolate place, this place that has no name, nothing, nothing is there, everything is barren, for him, he didn't know that God could reach above and beyond wherever he would go. And that is good news. And that is good news. That is good news. It says here the following. God is high and holy. And to the humble believing soul, his house on earth, the place where his people meet for worship. I thought this was very interesting. Pages and prophets. The place where people meet for worship. What is it? I don't know if you can see that on your screens. Is as the gate of heaven. You know what? When I read that quote, I said the church is as a gate of heaven. Yes, it's talking about the experience here. It's talking about the experience here. When we sing as we come as a church and we sing together and we praise God is as a gate of heaven. When we pray together as a body of believers is as a gate of heaven. When God's message is spoken and we receive God's message is as a gate of heaven. But what do you do? What do you do when a pandemic hits and we have to close our churches for in-person services? 
Does that mean that there's no more connection with heaven? You know what? God is not confined. I want to say something here. Praise God for his church. Praise God for this beautiful church. But the church is not this building. The church is you. You are the church. And like Jacob, he thought that God was only confined to a specific area. And he was overtaken when he found out that no, God is not just stuck in a specific area. He was overwhelmed by the notion that God was with him wherever he was. And in this time when the pandemic, when we have to close our churches for in-person services, I want to let you know that there where you are right now, it's a gate of heaven. It is your opportunity to connect with God and to make that a reality. And when the church opens again, we come back for fellowship. And that is good news. That is good news. How does um, Jacob finish? How does he conclude? The same way Martin Luther conclude, concluded. Did you know that Martin Luther, when he was having struggles with the guilt, sense of hopelessness, which then later brought a new reality, <laughs> the reality of the Reformation. <laughs> and you know what triggered that? No, uh, Martin Luther didn't have a dream like Jacob, but he did have an encounter like Jacob. And as a matter of fact, Martin Luther said, Thereupon I felt myself to be reborn, reborn, and to have gone through the doors of paradise. When he found, finally understood that we are saved by the grace of God. That sparked the great reformation. A movement, a new reality of the kingdom of heaven. And how does Jacob conclude? With a response. How do you respond to God's faithfulness? How do you respond to God's goodness? How do you respond to the reality that here on earth you can experience the realities of heaven and be connected with heaven through Jesus Christ? How? The way he concludes the chapter. And he says, Then Jacob made a vow saying, If God will be with me and will watch over me on this journey, I am taking And will, and will give me food to eat and clothes to wear so that I return safely to my father's household, then the Lord will be my God. The Lord will be my God. And this stone that I have set up as a pillar will be God's house. And all of, and all of that you give me, I will give you a tenth. And that's how he concludes. He concludes by saying, God, if you fulfill these promises that you have made me today, you will be my God. And I will bring back to you the tithe of everything you have given me. Yes, I wasn't gonna, I'm not going to speak about tithe today. But tithe, it's a response of God's faithfulness. And so today I, I want to make an invitation this morning because I don't know who's watching. But the first invitation I want to make today is for anyone here who has tasted and seen that the Lord is good. And today you want to recommit your life to Christ and you want to say, God, you will continue to be my God even in the midst of these troubling times. More than ever, I need you in my life. Also, If there's someone here who's watching who has never made a decision to invite Jesus Christ to be your Savior, to be the Lord of your life, to be the God of your life, and for Him to bring a new reality to you, no more fear, anxiety, no more this guilty conscience, but to have peace and to have the assurance of salvation, if that is you, I want to pray for you today. And finally... Church, we have a mission from God. We are the gate of heaven 
for many people who still don't know about Christ. And God wants to use you and me to bring others to this new reality. Do you want to respond to that call today? Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus to this earth. And for him being here, living a perfect life, dying for us, and now ascending to heaven, seated at the right hand of majesty. Today, Lord, once again, because of your goodness and your faithfulness, we renew our commitment to you that you will be our God. We also, Lord, today want to say that we want to be used by you to be, as a church community, a gate of heaven for other people who don't know you. And finally, for those who today have accepted you as their Lord, I ask a special blessing of refreshing upon their lives. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.